Hello, my name is Casey Williams, Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Spring Hill, Tennessee, and welcome to Brilliant Strokes. Brilliant Strokes is an intergenerational art program provided by the Arts Build Communities Grant through the Tennessee Arts Commission. And if you would like to be a part of this program, you can register online through the city website, www.springhilltn.org, or through the Parks and Recreation's Facebook page. All of our instructors are local artists, and we are so grateful to them for donating their time and their talents to be part of this unique program. Now I'm going to step aside and introduce you to our program manager, Sonia Ryan, who's going to take you through the steps and the materials you'll be using today. Have fun! Hi there, I'm Robin. I'm doing the mixed media session. This is class number one, and today we're kind of going to just experiment and familiarize yourself with all the tools we have, and I'll give you some tips of things you can be looking for before you're the next class, and uh, give you a little preview of some of the projects we're going to be working on. Um, one of the projects is what I created during our COVID madness and it's called Behind Closed Doors and it's um, taking some photographs and enhancing them with modeling paste and then coming back and adding some more paint to them so that's one project we'll do. Another one is um, I called it Find Your Way but you can get your own saying together but it's just lots of yummy layers and uh, bubble wrap is used, uh, the top to a uh, shampoo bottle, uh, then just some spray bottle. You might want to find a spray bottle. If you can't find one, in an empty one at your house, then we can just load up a paintbrush and that'll work just as, just as well. And so we'll be creating that. Another thing we're going to create is, um, it's called a simic writing. And you, a simic writing means without semantics or illegible. So some of you, that may work perfect because that's the way you write anyway. And so we'll create two of those, um, but this one's going to use an image transfer technique. And it doesn't look like much when it's a little piece of paper like that, but when you throw it behind a nice big mat and put that in a frame, you're golden. So we'll do two of those. This one's more of a collage work, and then this one is image transfer. At the end of today's class, we're going to prep our surface for next week for this one. Another tip I've got for you. If you're working at home, a lot of times you don't have a great space that's safe to work on. Puppy pads. They're really cheap. Buy a big box of puppy pad. It doesn't soak through with the water. Spread that out on your surface so that'll be a great place to work. And you can use them more than once. So for today, we're going to take just take one of the flat canvas panels that you have and um, I'll go through some of these supplies and tell you what, what they do, and then we can start experimenting. So the gesso that you have, this is used as a primer, so it can coat your surface, whether it's a canvas panel or a, scrap, a sketch paper or any other kind of substrate, and this just creates a surface that's ready to accept any kind of media, be it watercolor or acrylics. It can also be used uh, with the image transfer technique that we're going to work on. This is um, texture paste. It's quite thick and it takes a little bit to dry. Um, use that a lot with the palette knife and we'll apply it and then for the application we're using with the door technique you can use the bamboo skewer to kind of make your mortar that's between the stone or the bricks. Um, you can also use the bubble wrap and press down on it, pull it off, and that'll make some more different kinds of texture. So that's how we use that. Um, the Mod Podge, that is an adhesive and a sealant. So we use that for collage to attach our papers to the um, surface, and then you use it over the top to seal in your paper so that it doesn't rip apart when you go to work on it. Another cool thing I've got, we've got some little blocks in here with some uh, twine. You can just wrap your twine around and then use that, stamp it in your, in your paints and then stamp it on your surface to make designs. Also shelf paper the same way. You can use it either to put paint down or you put paint down and you can pull it off. So either way it works both to add and to take away. Another key thing you've got in your kit is this black permanent pen. It is waterproof, which is very important when you're working with wet media. And it's great to go in at the end and add some detail, or you can start by drawing with it and then coming in and adding the paint. 
Also, you'd like it'd be good to have a graphite pencil. Um, it's great for scratching into the paint or for adding on top of, say, a gesso layer to just add some, some unique marks. Another good thing, kitchen fork. Stay, again, it makes great patterns and we'll be working with that today. Um, one more thing you might want to have on hand is a straight edge. It's good for either making marks or tearing paper. So let's get started. So we're going to start with our um, black metal canvas and take out this paper that's in your kit and let's just start by tearing out this picture of the girl. So if when you're tearing, if you're tearing towards you, it's going to leave a little white edge here and if you're tearing away from you, the white edge is on the piece you're tearing away. So depending on what effect you want is the way you want to tear or you can do both. So we'll just tear her out. And it does it to be perfect. That's the great thing with collage. You pick whatever colors you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's no straight lines. And you don't have to draw it. So what I'm going to use for this, um, I'm going to use some of the Mod Podge. So when you use Mod Podge, you want to do both on the back of what you're adhering to and also on your surface. So you can just squirt a little bit out. Take one of your paint brushes, rub it on the back, and spread that out. It, we're not making anything in this project, so it doesn't matter where on your canvas you're putting anything. You're just going to experiment today. So then you put that down, and you want to put just a little bit more on top. And then that's going to seal it so that it doesn't tear when you try to start working with it. So now, while she dries, we'll go on to something else. So take any color that you have in your acrylic paints, any of your, whatever your favorite color is. I'm going to use a dark color just so it'll show up better as being contrast on your canvas when you work through it. So here what you can do is you can just paint a little space here. Now you can take the end of your paint, paintbrush, you can take your graphite pencil, take your skewer, and see that will drag it out away from the paint, painted blob there. And then the part of mixed media is lots of layers, so it could work in um, different sections and there's a lot of time that you spend downtime drying or between steps. So that's why we're just gonna work on this one and do a lot of different techniques. And then as the class goes, we'll prepare this week for something that we're gonna work on next week so that ha we don't have a lot of downtime. So and, um, let's just do some of the modeling piece here. So I like to use the palette knife with this one. Just scoop a little bit out. spread it out. You can use this very thin or very thick. Um, it just takes longer to dry if you do thick. And you can also tint this so we can put a little paint in there. And again you can use any of the tools to drag through. If this were like you know a brick wall things you can do is put it down. Take some bubble wrap and see what it does. So you just press it the bubble side down and lift that up. And then it's kind of hard to see but there's a little texture in there. Also, what you can do with your gesso is it's called veiling and what that means is you're just going to kind of disguise the edge so that there's not this sharp edge here you can bring it in.
cover that edge a little bit. And then take your paper towel and kind of rub some of it away so it kind of gives it a vintage look. So another thing to do, let's do some stamping with our shelf liner. So just paint kind of, you don't want a lot of thick paint because then it'll go down in all the crevices and just kind of brush it across the top Lift up. sweet design there never guess that that was shell paper same thing with our bubble wrap lift off so that's the way we'll do it first just lift off so press down Away. There's some very faint dots in there. And then do the opposite. Okay. So let's see what we can do next. Some other things that you might have around your house. You can use your fixed media. Empty toilet paper roll. So what I, the way I like to use that is to use it to make circles and I don't want them to be perfect I want them to kind of be like a coffee stain so dip it in there and sometimes you might want to do it on a test piece first and then Another great thing is with the water bottle. So you want to put some of your paint down. Switch over to the Pull some of your paint here. I'm gonna make a mess on this. Some of the paint across and your spray bottle. And cause little drips to go. Gives a little messy grunge look. And of course, do, if adding more colors and more layers continues on to the way that that will affect your piece. So, um, what we're gonna, oh, one more thing, let's do the homemade stamp. So you can take your, just take it and do it in the edge of your thing. And the good thing is you want to use them over more than once. You don't want to blot and come back and blot and come back because then you lose all variants. So if you just keep using the same thing until it runs out, then you'll add more depth and dimension to your work. Then you can take your string. And you can just wrap it around. Dip that in your cup. This media is messy. So you make it be like a fence row going this way. Or you can make go both ways. very loose plaid pattern <laughs> and you can just take it and drag it through as well so you can do that and like to remove some of the paint and drag it out all right so let's get ready for next week what you're going to need is one of the um, small panels to the small um, panels before class I think the ones in your in your work uh, bag might be a, another color because they were um, part from another project but if, if they are just take some of your gesso for next week and coat that panel the next thing you're going to need is um, out of your 
collage papers is the one with the butterflies. I believe there's three butterflies on the page. Let's see. And again, not perfect. You want to um, tear out a couple of the butterflies. Um, I used the two lighter colored ones. And again, perfection is not a part of this. If you want to fussy cut them, that's what we call it when you take the scissors and go around every edge. You're welcome to do that too. So, um, what we're going to do is put, um, we're going to do the image transfer technique. So what that means is, you're going to take your uh, photo. You can do this with off of a regular copier. It doesn't have to be special paper, regular copy paper, and a printer. And you print your image, and you're going to use the Mod Podge. You put it face down, which is very important. Another very, very important step is you do not get Mod Podge on the back when you're applying it. So if your fingers get Mod Podge on them, wipe them off before you come back to touch that. So. It's the same process as we used on the other transfer sheet. You'll paint the Mod Podge here and there. And it doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm going to put one towards the top and one at the bottom. I'm just going to be safe and get a paper towel. And you kind of want to start from the center and go to the outer edge so any excess will come out. And I'm going to put this lighter one and I'm going to let him come off the page at the bottom. You can just wrap whatever hangs off over the edge, and then when it dries, we'll just cut that off if it's peeling. And you're going to leave that till next week. So, if you like what you've seen and you want to take part in Brilliant Strokes, don't forget, go online to our Facebook page, that's Spring Hill TN Parks and Recreation, or to the Spring Hill City website and register. Registration opens February 18th. And the first eight people to register for each class will get a free goodie bag. Can't wait to be, get creative and have fun. <laughs>